on a tree or a rock or some, something over there. And you keep that mule G and then ha and then going right and left at, to make a straight row. And you go toward that thing in the distance. You gotta, yeah, I gotta anchor your vision to that thing because if you don't, you're gonna have all kind of cockeyed rows out there. The rows are supposed to be straight. You plow that row, and when you plow that one, you got one to row, row by, and you keep going side by side, and you get to the other side. And sometimes you gotta, you gotta. Quit worrying about the bugs and quit worrying about the, 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 what's going down the road over yonder or what noise is going on over here or, or what. You got to just quit. Consider. You got to refuse to hear some stuff. You got to refuse to see some stuff. You got to refuse to consider some stuff. That's a part of your faith. And sometimes that's just as important. Is what you are seeing. What you refuse to see. Those disciples didn't learn that. They didn't know that. And the storm distracted them. From what God had already told them was theirs. A trip to the other side. Has God made a promise to you? Has God. Has God told you. Something. That the devil's tried to beat out of you. That the devil's tried to pry open your heart and take that thing out of you. Has God's word come to you and the devil's made it calloused over? And the devil's tried to cover it and smoke it and, and everything else so that you can't... You can't get a clear view of it anymore. You can't hear it clearly anymore. I want to tell you it's time to go back yeah. to that prayer closet yeah. and get your row straightened out. Yeah. Because God does not lie. Amen. Just because it hasn't happened does not mean it's not going to happen. Amen. It looked like their ship was sinking. It felt like their ship was sinking. The water was coming in the boat. All of the reports, all of the evidence, everything they could feel, hear, and see said sink. When that happens to you, where's your faith? That's what he said to you. Where is your faith? It is in that storm. Or is it in what I told you? I'm preaching to you now. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hebrews 10.23 Hold fast the profession of your faith without wavering. Hold fast to the confession of your faith without wavering. Don't veer. Don't lean. Press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. What is the high calling? Whatever God told you, that's what it is. I know y'all are not near as excited about this as I am. But the Holy Ghost poured this into me this week. Fresh and new. He didn't tell me something I didn't already know, but every once in a while, every once in a while, somebody just needs to smack you and say, hey, <laughs> pay attention. Sometimes the Holy Ghost can very gently and very spiritually just smack you and say, hey, I'm over here. Get your eyes off of over there. I'm over here. James chapter 1, verse 6. Do not be double-minded. Don't make any provision for the flesh. Because the flesh will always fail. He said, when you ask, ask in faith 
nothing wavering. Nothing wavering. Straight on, head on. Faith, anchored. Romans 3.27 says, Where is your boasting? Is it in the law of Moses? Or is it in the law of faith? See, what makes this word alive? Because it's just laying right there. It can't even move. It can't even slide around it has no power to move. It's a dead letter. Until with your eyes or with your ears it enters into you. Then that which was a dead letter becomes a living spiritual truth. And when it marinates in you and you mix your faith with it and it comes out of your mouth in the form of a confession or profession, it ceases to be dead letter logos and becomes living rhema. The word of faith is neither even in thy mouth. When this mixes with your faith, it becomes flesh just like in Jesus. And when you speak by the Spirit of God that is in you, this truth out of your mouth, it takes on a, a human flavor in the earth that gives you authority and power to speak like Adam did and like Jesus did with the, all of heaven backing you up because you don't just speak what you heard. You speak what you believe. Yes. Amen. Don't try to get me to believe something you don't believe. You don't believe it. But if you believe it, I'll hear you. I'll hear you then. We live in a church world of religion. People go through motions and liturgies and they just go out of habit. They go to church every Sunday so they can say they've been to church. Not because they went to have an interaction with God. Just religion. Just rote ritual. Jesus said the words that I speak unto you. They are spirit and they are life. Quickening power is in those words. Those words are living seeds that go into the ground where you plant it and begin to grow and process. So don't go out tomorrow after the anointing is gone and dig up your seed that you sowed yesterday. Keep it sowed. Keep it said. Keep it anchored. And keep it believed on. And keep moving in the direction of it. Because that's where your victory is. Even your faith. This is the victory that overcomes world systems. Even your faith. The world don't know nothing about faith. They don't know nothing about faith. I want to I wanna say some things to you. There are laws that govern how faith works. Faith is a law. There are laws that govern how faith works. These laws are just as dependable as natural laws. You don't worry about the created laws of God. The sun's going to come up. Yes. Maybe cloudy and you can't see it, but it still came up. Yeah. The moon is going to be there at night. Why? Because he hung those things there and he never told them to move. That's a natural law. Gravity is a law. 
it works. If I drop this Kleenex, it's not going to the ceiling. It's going down every time. A hundred times out of a hundred times, it's going down. Why? There's a law at work. Faith is a law, and there are laws that govern faith. The reason many times we don't get our prayers answered is because we don't know the laws of how our faith is designed by God to work. Now listen to me. This is very important. This is the crucial part. These laws must be implemented for faith to work. Faith is not just believing in God. A lot of people think that's what faith is. It is not faith that it just believes in God. The devil believes in God. He fears and trembles he believes so much. But has he got any faith? No. No. Not at all. Now, let's take a natural law. The typical thunderstorm right here in Georgia produces enough electricity to power a large city for about a year. Just one thunderstorm could power the city of Atlanta for about a year. There's that much electricity in one average thunderstorm. That seems almost impossible. But it's still true. It's scientifically true. But although that kind of electricity has been around for millenniums of time, man has only learned to harness that power in the last few decades. Within the last century. It was around for centuries and centuries. With as much power as it has today. But we didn't know. We were ignorant of how to access it. Access it. But when we learned, then our learning began to, to, to uh, increase. And, and we realized that we could access something that would make our life better. You know, it wasn't God trying to keep all that electrical power from us. It was our ignorance keeping it from us. Hello? God wasn't hiding it. He was displaying it. It was our ignorance that kept us powerless. It is man's ignorance of the laws of how uh, electricity work that kept us in dark places. Modern day conveniences like our appliances would have worked years ago if we had just not been ignorant of how to access that power. It would have worked in 1700 just like it works today, if we had known how to make it work for us. It was just as powerful then. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, what's true in the natural is also true in the spiritual. Paul said in his day, 2,000 years ago, Paul said, I'm telling you things that have been hidden since the foundation of the world. Why? God had revealed to him things about the church and about the plan of God and about the kingdom of God that people, Abraham didn't know. Isaac and Jacob didn't, Moses didn't know. But God revealed them to Paul. It's so much so that the devil tried to, uh, tried to sift Paul with some kind of a messenger from Satan to shut down his revelations. Why? Because Satan does not want you to know how things work. He does not want you to know truth because that uncovers him. Now listen, what's true in the natural is true in the spiritual. 
modern day convenient. We could have had refrigerators back in the 1500s if we'd have just known how to do it. We could have had toasters, drills, fans, air conditioning. We could have had all that because the power was here. We just did not know how it works. Would you agree with that? Mm -hmm. Likewise, all of God's best has been available to us since the new creation. That's 2,000 years ago when Christ Jesus came and set things back like they were in the garden. New creation. Old things passed away, behold, all things become new. You are in it. God started over with you and me, with us, in Christ. When that happened, God released things that are available through the accessing of our faith that the world had not known anything about since the Garden of Eden. Those things God freely released to us in the new creation. But we still don't know how things work. Why? Because we're ignorant. And I'm not using that as a derogatory term. Ignorance is that you don't know something. Stupid is that you don't want to know something. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The woman with the issue of blood came to Jesus and was healed in that crowd of people that were, that were walking and crowding Jesus. She came and was healed because she touched the hem of his garment. Nobody else in that crowd got healed. Why? You read your Bible. There is no evidence that anybody else in that crowd got healed. Do you suppose there were no sick folks? Of course there were. you suppose there were no, no people in that group that wanted something from Jesus? Why were they following him? Mm -hmm. But nobody got anything that we know of except that one woman. Why? Because she knew something they didn't know. She operated in the laws of faith. She made her faith work like it's supposed to work. God made every provision and the power source is already available. God's power won't flow till we flip the switch. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. You can build a house. Put all the fixtures and the sockets, all the switches and all the wiring, and all the, the amenities in it. Call a power company. It has passed inspection. Put us on the power grid. Send the power. Oh, Lord, send the power. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. The thing is, he sent it 2,000 years ago. We just don't know how to access it. He's not going to send it. It's sent. Power company has sent power here. But guess what? You're going to sit in the dark until you learn how to flip the switch. Even though the power is here. Even though the receptacles are hot, the fan's not going to work, the refrigerator's not going to cool, the heater's not going to warm you, the air conditioner's not going to cool you. Why? You don't know how to flip the switch. When you learn, you get the power. Mm -hmm. Hello, y'all. Are you listening? I'm reminded of an old Oklahoma Indian chief years and years and years ago back back in the 1800s 
they discovered oil on his home site, on the reservation. And this old chief, he was on up in his years. They told him, you have become wealthy, rich. You can have, you can afford, you can, you can do, what would you like to have? He said, well, I'd like to have me a big old long black car. Because he'd seen one go down the road. And so his family got together. Went out and bought him a brand new black long sleek Cadillac convertible. And the next day, he went down through town, sitting on the back seat, on the top of the back seat of that convertible car, with, with reins in his hand that were tied to two horses pulling that Cadillac. <laughs> and boy, he was in tall cotton. He had horses under the hood but he didn't know how to use them he just tooling along with them old wore out horses pulling that big old Cadillac that's church today we don't know what God has prepared for us we haven't seen it we haven't heard it hadn't entered to our heart but I want to tell you, God has made provision, and it's there, it's waiting. When we learn how to flip the switch. There are laws that teach us. What did this woman do? First of all, number one, she heard. Faith cometh by? Hearing. Hearing. Here he cometh by the word of God. She heard the word of God. She heard that Jesus was passing by. She heard that he was the Messiah. She heard that he was the Son of God. She heard. Second of all, she believed what she heard. She didn't just take it as another Sunday school lesson. She didn't take it as, oh, that's good information. She actually believed what she heard about the Word. The third thing that she did was she let it come out of her mouth in words. She heard it. She believed it. She mixed her faith with it and spoke it. If I can but touch the hem of his garment, I know that I shall be made whole. She heard it. She believed it. And she spoke it. And then she acted on it by reaching out and touching the hem of his garment. And all of a sudden, Virtue, power, was released out of the outlet of Jesus Christ into her body because she had flipped and switched. Nobody else got that. They didn't know the combination. They didn't know the laws of faith. Hear it. Believe it. Speak it. And act. Now you know the law of faith. The problem is, even if we do that and we don't see anything immediately, we think it didn't work. Shut up! <laughs> Just because it didn't appear when you wanted it to does not mean that it didn't work. Amen. The 
word of God was good to Abraham the day he spoke it, but there wasn't an Isaac that appeared on the scene for ten more years. So, you got to hold on to hearing, believing, speaking, and acting on the word no matter what you don't see. Consider those things not. Just stand in faith and keep walking like Amen. it's already happened. Amen. Why? Because that's how faith works. Faith don't work by seeing. Faith works by hearing. And faith <coughs> works by believing. And faith works by speaking. And faith works by walking it out, putting it in shoe leather. That's how faith works. And you never say, it didn't work. It didn't happen. Well, I guess God don't love me like he loves them. Well, I guess I just am prone to not ever have anything that I'm trying to believe for. I guess my family is just poor and bound to stay that way. I guess I'm just, uh, you know, you know. What are you doing? You're digging up the seeds with that kind of talk. Shut up. Just shut plumb up. If you can't agree with the word of God, just shut up. And when I'm talking to you, I'm talking to me too, y'all. Don't confess your feelings. My God, your feelings change every five minutes. Don't confess what somebody else said. Well, you know, that, uh, I don't believe that works. And, uh, you know, over at our church, we have it. Have it. <laughs> Hogwash. Work the laws that make the access come to pass. Ooh. Spiritual laws are more important than natural laws, and they are more dependable. Turn with me to John, book of John. Let's look at uh, chapter 8. John chapter 8. Do you have a chapter 8 in your John? Uh-huh. Yeah. Verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue, 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 continue in my word, continue in my word, continue in my word, then you are my disciples, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The word know here in verse 32 is the same definition in the Greek and the Hebrew. In the Hebrew, over in the Garden of Eden, the Bible says, and Adam knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and he knew her. Now he knew her when he woke up and saw her. He knew her. God the Father presented her to him. He knew her then. But he did not know her in covenant fulfillment until they were consummated and she became the mother of his child. Then the relationship was at a different level. That's the same thing God said to Abraham when Abraham offered up Isaac. Now I know. God, How could God say now I know? He always knows. From the end of the beginning, the beginning, the, he knows. And yet God said about Abraham, now I know. That you might come to part. Why? Because we just went from a level of covenant that has become consummated with your act of offering your son and you are at a level with me now, Abraham, that you were not at before. And because of that, 
And that's what this scripture in verse 32 says, ye shall know the truth. That means you shall get intimate with the truth. You will get in covenant with the truth. And that intimacy of truth will make you free. Mm -hmm. Faith is a part of that process. The truth is a law all unto itself. Faith is a law that operates the level of truth acting in your life. God's not going to give you anything you don't believe. He can. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the mother of all parables is given to us by Jesus. The sower sowed seed and the seed fell on four different kinds of grounds. Matthew 13, uh, Mark 4, Luke 8. Same parable, given in a little bit different words. Did four different kinds of ground. The last kind of ground, the fourth ground, is called good ground. And that's the ground that produced the seed. But I want to read to you in Luke chapter 8. Verse 15. Luke chapter 8, verse 15. But on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it. Keep it. The seed can't grow if you don't keep it. If you don't let it stay planted, the seed cannot grow. Keep it. You got to get this word and keep it. You don't just believe it today. You keep on believing it tomorrow and the next day. And, and from now on, you keep it. You keep That's my word now. I keep it. I keep the word. Not in my head, in my heart. Yeah. And that's how my faith works. Because I have an intimacy with the promise at a covenant level. And I make my faith anchored in that promise. And I work the laws of faith until it manifests in my life. That's how it's got to work. You can't flip an empty switch. If the, the power company hadn't sent the power, you're not going to get anything. But when you got the power and you got everything in order, flip the switch, it works. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, faith is voice activated. <laughs> Comes by hearing. You see that? Clapper thing. Clap on. Clap off. <laughs> it's activated by sound. Faith is voice activated. Hear it. Believe it. Speak it. See, faith comes by hearing. Faith goes by speaking. Hear it. Believe it. Speak it. What's that for? Huh? Act on it. Faith is voice activated. Proverbs 18, 21. The power of life and death is in the tongue. The power of life and death of your miracle is in your tongue. You gotta work the laws of faith, which is involving your tongue. Words are the parent source of everything. Everything that exists came out of words. God's words. Words are the parent source of everything, and everything will respond to words. Because everything were, was created by words. Words will respond, or, or everything will respond to words, both positive and negative. 
You see this? Yeah. Violating spiritual laws will kill you just as sure as picking up a live wire. It'll kill you. If you can remember David and Uzzah in the Old Testament carrying that ark on the cart, the power of God killed that man. Why? Because they were not operating in due order. D-U-E-O-R-D-E-R. Due order. Because the laws of the Spirit work in the order of God. You can't aberrate it. It'll hurt you. Amen. Amen. There's laws and then there's higher laws. And I'm going to close with this. You, as I showed you a while ago, the law of gravity is at work. It's a law that works all the time. Everything. You drop the Bible, it's going to go down. Drop that paper, it's going to go down. Drop this cane, it's going to... Whatever you drop, it's going to go down. Because the law of gravity is at work. It is a constant law. It's a natural law. But there are spiritual laws that function the same way. You can get into an airplane and you can operate certain laws and that airplane can leave the ground. There's, there, there's laws to, for that. you got the law of gravity that holds that plane down. But if you, if you access the law of thrust, which is the engine pushing it horizontally, thrust, the law of thrust and the law of drag, which is the wind. See, airplanes take off into the wind. They don't take off going with the wind. They take off going into the wind. The wind is... Adversia, adversary, adversary <laughs> against that plane. Because thrust pushes it through the oncoming wind and the flaps on the plane's wings go down like this and cause drag. That's another function of the wind. Thrust and drag, which is making the back end of that plane heavier and the front end of that plane lighter and it begins to lift off the ground. Mm -hmm. Thrust, drag, and lift. Now, all that gravity that was holding that plane on the tarmac because it activated thrust and drag and lift it's now soaring through the air. It's not on the ground anymore. Now let me ask you a question. Did all of a sudden the law of gravity cease to exist? Nope. Huh? No. 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 Why could that plane defy gravity? Higher laws. Higher law. Thrust, drag, lift. And gravity was right where they left it. They operated in higher laws. Faith is a higher law than sickness. Faith is a higher law than debt and lack. Faith is a higher law than lies and deceit. Faith is a higher law than all of the kingdom of darkness. Have you heard anything today? Mm -hmm. Faith does not do away with gravity or with the laws of trouble and strife. It simply supersedes them and overrides them. And like the eagle, you ride above the storm, not through it. Work your faith and your faith will work. Faith is the servant of the believer. Yeah. Make it work for you. Stand up on your feet.
Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for these precious people. I thank you for their faith. I thank you for their love. I thank you for their faithfulness. I thank you, Lord, that they come to hear the word of truth. And I ask you, Lord, to activate in our lives today a level of faith that we've never operated in before. That today, as we leave here, this truth will not leave us, but it will grow in us, and it will mature in us, and we will be able to see things, believe things, into existence that we have never been able to access before. Father, nothing is impossible with you. We don't ask outside the confines of your promises. We don't believe for stupid and foolish things. But Lord, if we find this promise in your word, we are free to stand on it and we will. Now, Father, I pray your blessings upon everyone in this place and that this will marinate in us as we go from here. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Amen.